In this video, we'll talk about the R and RStudio environments. Now, it's very unlikely that you will be working within R, uh, but I'm going to show you what it looks like anyway. Um, we can see here that we are in the R environment. This is the R console. Um, you can um, see that the R version that we had installed um, is 4.1.1. You want to make sure that this is always updated. And one way to do this is to um, go on top and say an R and say check for updates. And here it says your version of R is up to date. Okay, if it's not up to date, then uh, we might have to do this um, uh, one extra step before we go to R Studio. Okay, you want to make sure at all times that R and R Studio are up to date. So let's close this out. I'm going to say don't save. I'm going to go to my dock and I'm going to uh, or launch pad and open up our studio. Now this is telling me that I'm working with the R 4.1.1 uh, version, which is the most recent version um, that we installed. Um, we can also um, go to the help menu on top and also see check for updates and these updates are going to be for our studio So when we do this uh, It says no update available. You are using the newest version of our studio. So we're going to hit ok um, So we've checked both for R and our studio now um, once we are in the R studio environment um, This is a nice interface a nice environment um, that allows you to see multiple things at once. Um, I am going to go ahead and create an R script by clicking on this left corner right here and selecting R script. Now you're going to see that the screen is divided into four parts. Um, we're going to talk about this first part. This first part is nice because it allows you to write some comments like this is an R script and I can save my work here. Okay, so any command that we type, any description that we want to um, uh, make of any commands or any of the work we are doing, we can do all do that here. Uh, if you want to write an R command, you can simply go ahead and write a command. Like let's say uh, the command was head data, then we can just write that command, okay? We're not going to put the hashtag because that is for writing comments, okay? So when you're putting the hashtag in front of a sentence um, or a description, that portion is going to turn green and that is never going to run if you run this R script, okay? Um, now let's uh, delete this and uh, think about the second piece that we're seeing here. So, and before we get to the second piece, notice that I always have the option of saving this R script. So I'm going to save this R script uh, on my desktop and I'm going to call this homework one. It's nice to organize your um, folders and uh, classes so that you don't lose your work. Um, I'm just putting everything on the desktop for now uh, for convenience. Now notice that I changed the name, so it says homework1.r. The extension .r um, is telling me that this is an R script. Okay. Um, and now the second portion that you see here it's, uh, is called the console. Notice I could always write things here in the console. I can give commands right here. Um, if I don't want to save those commands and I'm just exploring something in R, I might want to work in this um, uh, uh, part right here, in the second part right here. Otherwise, if I want to save something and I want to write down commands, I'm going to be working up here, okay? Uh, but we'll see how everything works. Now, the third part right here is called the environment. And you're going to see that it gets populated. There's a link between this portion right here um, in your R script to this environment. So let's say I wanted to assign the value of 4 to x. Okay, so I can basically keep my cursor here and hit run. You're going to see that down below, um, x was, um, this was executed, right? Correctly, there was no error. There were 
there were there are no red flags here this run um, perfectly and on the right hand side the value of x got populated right so this is our environment and now x is uh, taking the value of 4 okay now I can give it another command and I can say uh, assign the value of 10 to x okay so now if you can write this two ways um, this is an assignment operator, right? The less than and the hyphen. Um, basically, this is saying assign the value of 10 to x, okay? This can also be written as right? So you can see this is like a pointer, right? So we're saying assign the value of 10 to x. So this this or this, they do the same thing, okay? So let's work with this um, line number four over here, and we can run this command, okay? Uh, notice that now the value of x on the right-hand side changed. Uh, also in the command window, we could execute this, right? So this replaced it, replaced the value of x. Um, we can give the value of uh, 20 to y, and execute this command and then we can see if we wanted to run multiple lines of code let's say um, x plus y i can run multiple lines of code at once okay by selecting these and hitting run okay so all of these ran again these three lines that i selected and um, i got the answer to my question x plus y Okay, so this is working like a calculator. You can also assign um, strings to variables. So let's say I want to create a, a string which says z is, let's store a sentence in z, which is r is awesome. You may not agree with me at this time, but I'm hoping that in the next few videos, you will start thinking that R is awesome. So let's uh, run this. And notice on the right hand side, this is um, Z and this is saying R is awesome, right? So this is always in quotes because this is uh, a string variable, okay? Now I can always check what the class of these objects that I'm creating are. So the class, I can say, what is the class of X? and it will tell me something. So it's telling me the class of X is numeric, which is correct, okay? And I can similarly check the class of Z. And it's saying this is a character vector, right? This is not numeric, right? You could have a logical um, class or you could have a, a character or you have numeric or you have integer. Um, different classes that data can come in different uh, forms okay okay so the next thing we want to do is um, just understand that on the right hand side here uh, we're going to see the um, environment get populated as we give commands um, on the left hand side we can also look at the history of the commands that we've given right so these are all the commands that I gave today um, and I can see all of this, right? There are some other things here that we will worry about later, okay? And last but not the least, you have this fourth box here, the fourth part, um, which is giving you a lot of information. So this bottom part says lots of things. The first thing it tells you is um, where are the files? Um, now you can always pick a file, let's say I wanted to operate on my desktop, I can always uh, pick a file and I can operate from here. So let's say there was some data that's lying on my desktop. It's called MEAP01 underscore V5 and the extension is R data because this is an R data set. I can click on that and I can load the data. Okay, so notice over here, it basically loaded my data and it populated the environment with this data set. Um, there are many different ways to do this. I could also go to my desktop and see where my data is kept or into a folder where the data is kept. 
So let's say I wanted to uh, open up this data set. I can then say populate this populate the environment with this data and this comes up here. The one um, thing that you want to do here is always um, set your working directory, which you can do in at least three ways. Uh, one is that we just opened up this file from our desktop. Um, and if we want to set the working directory, setting the working directory means telling R where to look, right? Where are we going to work? Um, so if we want to work um, in our desktop area, then we're going to say, since the file was already on our desktop, we're going to say to source file location, right? That's where the file was kept. So we're going to see that now in the console, it says we are working in on our desktop, okay? Um, the other way we can set the working directory is by actually choosing the directory. Okay, I can choose um, where I want to work in my on my computer, right? So I can here just set set the desktop, and I can say open, and it does the same thing. I can also set my working directory if I had something opened up in my files pane. Right, so this is my files pane, and I can go back up. I can say go to desktop, and if I say session, set working directory to files pane location, and it seems like in the files pane I'm in desktop, then I can just do that, and it's gonna put me um, in the desktop. Okay, so you can do this many ways. I prefer just um, sometimes opening up uh, the file, uh, the data file, and keep it wherever I want to keep it, and open that up, and then select source file location. Okay, um, and this bottom part has many other things that you can do. Um, you can, if you're plotting some data uh, using some commands, you will the plots will appear here. You can also export those um, plots if you want to. Um, save them as an image or a PDF or copy them to the clipboard. You can do that all that here. We'll talk about what packages mean a little bit later, but different packages um, have different functions that make our lives really easy. And so here you see there, I've been using R for a long time, so I have a lot of packages already installed. Some would just come in uh, with the uh, base R and our um, uh, and the R Studio when you install it, um, you can always update the packages from here. Um, you can install the packages using a particular name if you were told to, or you can search. So let's say we wanted to install the Woolridge package. I can type in, and then it appears that there is Woolridge. I can hit install, and notice something's going to happen in the console. So here I've installed Woolridge, but when you're using, a, you want to use a package when you're working, you probably want to load that package. So there's two ways you can do that. Um, this is all alphabetized, so I might have to go down and hit check here, and notice here it says library Woolridge. And so I can always store that in my R file, okay, in my R script. So I can put that here so I don't forget to load um, Woolridge. And there you go, I did it again, right? So line number 13 here is just telling R that let's go ahead and load this package because we want to work with that. So um, here, um, uh, that's what this bottom part is doing. You also have the help menu here, which is really, really useful. I find myself here a lot. Um, it gives you how you're supposed to use different functions and it also gives you the arguments that go in a function and also some examples down below. Okay, so that's it.